we're off. There we are. Hello there. Good, good afternoon, or depending on where you are, good morning or good evening. Um, yeah, we're live again. A little bit later than we've previously been. That's because we've um, been having a little look at um, at what YouTube's telling us, and they've they've released some new tools and things like that, which actually tell us when more of you uh, are watching us. And around this time, it seems that more people are watching us. So that's why we're doing live stream now. So if you're, you're new here, welcome to the Love Spoon Workshop. If you've seen what we do before, welcome back. Uh, today, we're carving a simple spoon, one of the Love Spoons that we actually sell in our online shop. Uh, we're carving a piece of oak, a piece of recycled wood, this one here, as we mentioned previously. We reclaim, we recycle a lot of our woods, and it's a popular design. I'm probably going to get it wrong now. Is it Celtic Dreams we call this one? It's basically got a, it'll have, it'll have a, a Celtic, um, a Celtic aspect to the name because um, it's got the Celtic Eternity sign. That's the symbol that you can see at the top. So as you can see, for those of you who are interested in learning wood carving, if that is what you're uh, here for, is to learn how to carve, you know, anything basically, learn wood carving or do love spoon carving, you can see as always, we start with our stop cuts. So we cut down into the wood. So we've done the stop cuts on the outside of these two shapes that are gonna be our hearts. Uh, we then go on to, where's my mallet? Over there. That's where earlier one of my sons, he was doing a little bit of uh, carving on the bench. Just gonna use that mallet just to give us a little bit of extra pressure and do the stop cuts for the top, the top of the bottom heart. That makes sense. So yeah, you can see that we've carved that basic shape, that basic outline. Um, and now afterwards we use those stop cuts as a barrier and we're gonna give a little bit of depth to the carving itself. Now tomorrow, we're actually doing a live stream. We're doing a little bit of a collaboration. Uh, we're doing a live stream for Ten and Tours. So if anybody's interested in hearing some of the stories behind our family collection of Love Spoons, that will be uh, going on, I'm thinking UK time, it's eight, eight o'clock. Um, it's mainly, it's sort of being done coast to coast in, in, in the US. So I, I'm not 100% sure, it'll be a bit earlier in the US, but it's eight o'clock UK kick off so that's uh, yeah that's what we're doing tomorrow now, as you can see we're just taking a little bit of the wood away in and around the heart so we're giving a little bit of depth to the carving itself so we just take away that waste wood that we don't want and it's trying to bring out the the heart in the design so we just bring that out so we make the hearts more prominent and just push the surround, push that surround back. So you can see we just take out a little bit of wood around the outside. Afterwards then, in keeping with my style of carving, I will then come back and bevel the edges of the hearts. So as you may know, if you've been following us, if you've been looking at what we do, the last few weeks we've been, we've been doing, we did a bespoke, uh, love spoon carving, so slightly more complicated. We also did a cat last week and we did some designing. This is a slightly more simple carving for us, something that we would sort of be doing on a daily basis. But hopefully it gives you an insight into what we are doing here, on, you know, sort of on, on a daily basis. I just thought as well, my camera's been on a while, so. I've just refocused it. Reason I'm refocusing in that is, is that my camera's only got a, a 30 minute live view on it, so we don't want to disappear as you're watching us. Now, if we focus on this one at the top, this is a popular symbol on a love spoon. And anybody, as I said, who's interested in learning carving, it's a good one to learn because you have, 
like an effect of over and under, over and under. So what I mean by that, part of the design is, is gonna be going under the other part of the design. So we're trying to create that effect. So we choose the way that we're gonna go. So this piece here is gonna actually be on the top. This piece is gonna be pushed back. So we do the stop cut for where we're gonna be pushing that part of the design back. So you can see, we've done the, the stop cut on the one side and we're now doing the stop cut on the other side. And it's a continuous symbol. That's what we're trying to do is create that effect that it's continuous, but also um, it overlaps. So it'll go over, under, over, under, if that makes sense. Probably easier for me to explain when I've actually finished carving it. What we've also done then, as always, we've marked the wood out with a vertical grain. Gives us that extra strength, but it also makes it easier for the hand carving. Celtic symbols, then, of course, they're popular on love spoons. And a lot of people would think, you know, with the Celts, with the Lynx, with Wales being one of the Celtic nations, that it, they would be sort of traditional love spoon symbols. Uh, they're not, actually. It's a more recent development, but there's nice symbolism. There's some nice ideas that a, uh, a Celtic symbol includes. So we use quite a few different ones. Uh, we've used the Celtic symbol for new beginnings. Um, there's a, a Celtic symbol for unconditional love. We use this one here. This is probably the most popular one, the eternity sign. And um, we actually, we've got about four or five different designs that incorporate it in. Um, I'm trying to think, there's a few others that we've used as well, but of course being live, it's managed to escape my brain. So I'll have to remember that at another time. But as you can see, we're, we're giving sort of depth to the carving. So we're, we're actually removing quite a bit of wood from the surround because the surround is there to give strength to, the, to the design and it's there to support it but it's ultimately not the most important feature of the design. The important features um, are the two hearts and that eternity sign. So you've got the idea of eternal life, eternal love. So as I mentioned, we use that stop cut to work into so we can create that effect of it going under and over. We're then going to do the same here. Because whilst this strand goes over there, it'll go under here. Here we are. Oh, Thomas Woodcarver's just walked in. It's it's good good afternoon. Prananda. Prananda. It's it's good afternoon here, but it could be good morning elsewhere. So it's Borada Prananda and, and Nostar, is it? So uh, a bit of a, a combination of all things. So just explaining that we're creating that effect of going under and over, and we're just getting rid of some of the wood for the surrounds. We're pushing that back, um, because the main features we want to bring out is that eternity sign and the hearts, as opposed to, to the surround itself. I'm told the sound is all right. <clears throat> yeah, we've been giving our updates. Thank you, Yelly. That's Yelly watching in next door for us, checking everything is okay. Because the one thing we do have a few problems with, sometimes we do lose sound. So, yeah. So, you can see us creating that effect of the eternity sign going over and under. Um, afterwards as well, as I always do, in keeping with my own carving style, I will bevel the edges. I've also been mentioning we've got a live stream and we're going, going coast to coast tomorrow in the, in the US in, in conjunction with Tenon Tours. Okay. Yeah. Can I just say a point there, because you know, if if somebody, <clears throat> I mean, you you've developed a skill, it you you're pushing quite hard. Yeah. But you could use a mallet. Well, that's right. Yeah. Very, early, very early in the demonstration, I was I was looking for my mallet. Uh, okay. The the reason for that, I was doing these ones here. I tell you what it is as well. It's a good point that we can explain. Um, I do tend to be a bit heavy-handed, so I don't use the mallet a lot. If I was to use the mallet there, the problem with me, I'd probably go and split it. And that's the, that's the problem that's myself. Said, just very gently yeah. there. 
because because we're sort of because the grain is running there there's a good chance with me but as dad said that comes down to sort of physical strength you may find that you need that mallet for a bit of extra pressure myself i tend to be a bit of a a bit heavy-handed so i i tend to only use i use the mallet quite quite sparingly but it can be really useful um, depending on your carving style, can I, can I just, depending on how, how you I, do it. I, I won't uh, do anything, but I, I just... What would you like to demonstrate? I'm just going to come in. Yeah, Daz is going to... He's taking and, over. And what I mean is no, nothing that changes. little bit there... Yeah. Boom. Just very gently. That's right. And then you can... The bit you've done yeah. there, but... You can slowly so, work your way in. A little bit harder that time. Yeah, okay. that's it. And... There. I'll, there I'll, I'll, I'll let you carry on. Yeah. But it's just, just for anybody. But it also highlights. Gently. Yeah, it also highlights as well different styles. Because um, I do tend to sort of go at things in a, in a certain style. It's just me. That's just how I how yeah. I do it. So but it's just to explain, you know, that. Yeah. It, it's there for everybody. Exactly. So you don't have to sort of. You know, I'm, I'm as well. When I'm doing this, I'm very conscious that we're, we're doing a live stream, and it is nice if people can see it progressing quickly. And and that is to be honest, this is my natural tempo of carving. It's the natural way I do it. But as Dad says, we all do things differently. So yeah, if you do it differently to me, nothing wrong at all. If you do it differently to me, you're probably doing it correctly. To be honest with you, so uh, you know, it's, I'm not going to argue with that. It's finding your your own style. The most important thing, it's a good point actually as well, because the most important thing is the final result. It's, it's if you're happy with, with what you've produced. So whilst you may not do it sort of what is regarded as technically, right? If you're happy with the end result, or more importantly, the person you're making it for, if they're happy with the end result, then um, that's the most important thing. And we're back to the point of no rules or regulations. Yeah, it's, absolutely. You know, you, you have to be careful, obviously, got in, uh, got with it. the chisel. It's there to be enjoyed, isn't it, at yeah. the end of the day? Um, one thing I was going to say as well, we've been filming over the weekend here because those of you who are interested in the scroll saw, yeah, we haven't forgotten about you. It's um, it's something we've sort of been planning out. We've got, we've got a few videos coming up. We haven't forgotten the side of um, the scroll saw in. We, we spent yesterday filming... Um, so that will be coming up soon. So uh, bear with us. It's because we've been doing more of the live streaming. It's more difficult for us to set up the scroll saw in as opposed to uh, setting up the wood carving. But we've got a few special videos coming up because yeah, it's great to be able to share those those with you all. We have also still yet to publish our documentary, going through all of our family spoons. So we're, we're excited about that one because that's a that's a that's a, a bit of a feature then, and that'll be coming up uh, probably in the next week or two. But yeah, so so keep a look out for, for that one there. Another point there, Dave. You you turned it round in the vice. Yes. But obviously you've done that because you always sit in that position anyway. Yes. Yeah, so I'm sitting. I would the carve. be moving around because I stand the carve. Yeah. So in some ways, it's. So it's it's an advantage if you can you know move around, um, because you you know you you don't have to turn it around in the, the vice, but equally when it when it comes to live streaming it's it's an advantage to sit down because I turn it around in the vice and it doesn't really. Uh, well, I don't know whether you've explained you know that you always sit down to carve. I do. You know, yes, it's, it's great because um, I. <laughs> Being a joiner by trade, I always stand up anyway, That's and it. I find it quite difficult to sit down. Yeah. But it does, would you say it's help, more helpful with the back? Well, yeah, massively. Um, and my advice, you may notice, is adapted, and that the reason for that is adapted, so it's square on. We've got a comment there. Do you want to check somebody's... Uh, yeah, anybody watching as well, if you want any, got any comments, you want to ask any questions? Is it Yelly? Yelly? Beautiful spoon. Oh, thank you, Yelly. Anybody else as well? You got any comments? Need any help with your carving? Remember, feel free to ask us, and uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll answer anything that you're worried about. Any anything 
that, that's sort of causing you problems in your car, then, yeah, get those questions in because we love to help people out and we love to help you with our carving. To give you a background on that, we used to um, we used to do a lot of teaching here at the workshop. It's just been made really difficult with all the rules and regs, health and safety and all that sort of thing. It's very difficult for us to do that sort of thing. But through YouTube now, thankfully, we're able again, really, to, to assist you, to help you with, with, your, with your carving. So as, you, as I mentioned as well, you can see me beveling all those edges. So we're just shaping that. On that business of yeah. sitting or standing. Yeah, I wanted to come back to that. Yeah. Another thing we used to, um, we used to, I used to find, I used to do was that it, I wouldn't be working on the one piece and complete it. I You'd have several have pieces at one time, maybe wouldn't you? Three or four yeah. pieces, especially when you're doing more elaborate things, yeah. and you would sort of come back to it. That's you, right. You do a little bit, and then you know. As as I tend to. I tend to find it suits it suits myself just do one piece and then go on to the next one. But that's the thing. We're all different. We've all got different ideas. That's right. And it's it's good to sort of try different things, have a go, and do it in different Look ways. In there for the direction of the grain, yes. Yeah, so just as Dad was noticing, it. that one there, we're gonna have to turn it round just to finish that side of the spoon round because we were just beyond that. I've done a video on that one there, dedicated to talking about the critical point. Excuse my hand two seconds while it was there. The critical point there, we, we were just above the critical point. So the direction of the grain, we're fine there. To finish off here, we're going to have to turn it around in the vise and go the other way. A little point you did then, you, took, you carved towards yourself. Yes, Which I did. obviously... Technically <coughs> you shouldn't do. Not recommended, but... No, but we, we, we tend to... We cheat a little bit, is the, yeah. is the thing with it. In, uh, yeah, but you shouldn't carve towards yourself. Going back to that thing as well, um, with the standing and sitting, yeah, what it would be interesting. Anybody's got any comments on it? What do you prefer to do? Some prefer sitting down to carve. As Dad said, he stands to carve. Um, when I worked with Yelly, when I was teaching her, she's the most uh, recent person most recently I've worked with. She preferred standing up. Most people that I've worked with in the past are more comfortable standing up. And the truth is with myself, when I started carving, I was also more comfortable standing up to carve. Um, but I had, I had problems. I was doing sport at the same time and I, I kept on getting injuries and the physio put it down to the work I was doing. And he recommended me sitting to carve and it took me quite a little while didn't it to get used to it yeah but now it is it i do think it is an advantage but yeah put that in the comments as well let us know what are you more comfortable doing do you find it more comfortable to stand or are you happier to sit be an interesting little debate for everyone so you can see we're getting towards finishing just shaping just beveling the edges of the hearts we got a little bit more work and in terms of organisation, I'm working out, I reckon that I pretty much finished all of my carving in the one direction. So let's just check, I've done that, I've done that. Yeah, so I think one more turn in the vise, and we should be able to complete the carving on this love spoon. Well, I've also got the shellac ready to finish. You're, you're saying that. Right. But <laughs> as, at the moment, we, yeah. we, we normally have, um, a gentleman helping us with the shellacking, but at the moment I'm having to do the shellacking. Yeah. So um, the one thing that um, I have to sort of check over is that you've done, you carved on the front. Yeah. But I like to turn it over and have a look to see if I need any work on the reverse side because sometimes so are you using this live stream to complain yes all right he's making a complaint about my finishing on the back of the love spoons yeah because i go to shellac it and then i have to come back to the bench with the spoon turn it over and take all the sharp points on the back of the spoon which is a bit of a bind so um, I, I basically the reason I, I leave them on there 
is I, I like to check to see when you're doing the schlacking. I like to know that it's, it's good to hear because I like to know that you're checking everything, see? So, good, so good, I, I've, I've left it yeah, there yeah. to know that you, you are actually checking it. So that's good to know. Yeah, he is, he is checking everything when he's, he's schlacking it. Have you, have you got any songs for us? Uh, no, I haven't today. Any songs? I, I, I haven't got a this, song today. No. It's got to be. Yeah. I don't know. I'm trying to think of the a, something. A song with a. There's got to be an eternal, eternal love, or something. There's got to be a song with eternal love. Or I, I'll think about it, but I haven't got one at the moment. I, I, I'm trying to think. Comment section will have to help us out again. Any songs? I was listening, eternity. I was listening to uh, the radio just now, and they were singing. I. I what was it? I. I paved paradise to put up a parking lot or something like that. Paved paradise. They paved paradise I think that's to right. put up a parking lot. Yeah, I was thinking about all these poor ash trees that we've had to cut down. Yeah, we've had a rough week. We've had to, we've we've had tree surgeons in here because of course ash. We've been talking about it for a while. Ash dieback has has had a lot of our trees, but it's all it's not all sort of disastrous. It's not all bad news because we've managed to plants it's around about 500 well it's 500 plus trees that we planted ready because we knew this day was coming so yeah we've we've had all of the trees gone so it's changed the view quite a bit sadly they'd all been killed by this ash dieback that's affecting the country um but yeah they they've all gone but we planted oak trees we planted things like mountain ash to replace them we've uh, planted holly all sorts. It's interesting right. because the mountain ash isn't as affected. Uh, no, it seems to be surviving, doesn't it? The, yeah. the mountain ash. And of course, here in Wales, we actually have a little village called Mountain Ash, don't we? Yeah. You still have a good rugby team up there. Yeah. I don't know if they still, they, they, they may, I, I'm saying that, they're still probably a very good rugby team yeah. there. But yeah. There we are. Right. Should we swap over and. Well, if um, you just turn it over and just check. You want the me back to check the back? Yes, please. You can see. Uh, yeah, it's quite sharp bad. though, they're quite sharp and well, I like, I like well, to soften the if I just, a little bit. There we are, if I just demonstrate, yeah. all Dad just likes likes to do a little bit is like that. that. And the truth of it is, is that, um, the, the, the truth of it is, is that we, we, we sort of tend, I tend to be on to, that's interesting, look at that. That's just where the grain has gone the other way. Yeah. So I'm going to carve towards myself, which I know you shouldn't do, but it's just that that particular piece, the direction of the grain is, is going the opposite way. We take the sharp edge off there. That's nice now, though. You see, it softens the back for me. When I'm shellacking that now, I'll be smiling all over. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, that's great. We just take the sharp edges off there. Have you got your shellac ready? Yeah, I've got the shellac ready. So we're just taking those sharp edges. Some people ask us as well, why, why don't you carve the back? Why do you spend you know, so much time on the, on the front and then not carve the back? Well, the, the truth is, is that most people, they don't, you know they, they they don't really they're well, the not spoon, really the looking the at the wall. back that's right because it's going to be on the wall um and the other thing as well I, when i've had people say oh i want it done on the back you say okay that's fine but it's the extra cost involved in doing it it tends to sort of put people off um to have it carved on the back as well when as dad says it mainly will be by the wall you won't even see it did i cut that one on the scroll saw or did you uh, that has definitely been cut by yourself on the scroll sword. So if oh, you've got well, well, if, if you've got a crisp, there, there weren't any chips. It was pretty well perfect, wasn't it? All right, I thought you were gonna you were gonna say there was something wrong, which oh, I was which thinking you thinking how good it was, which you probably were, if if I'd have said um, I'd have done it. So there we go. Um, right, we're just finishing off. We've taken off all the sharp edges. So Thomas the Woodcarver will hopefully now be. Very pleased with, with the finish on the back as well. There we are, just takes that sharpness off. And of course, we sand the bowl. I carved the bowl before, I just, just to speed things up a little bit. Um, right, I can actually see. i tell you one thing I can see. One thing I look at, I like it balanced on both sides. And i tell you what it is. I can see um, there, there's a bit more wood on this side, still left. And there's, at the top of here, there's a bit more wood left by there. There. I'll leave that with you. And Good. we'll swap over. Good. Thomas Woodcarver's going to schlack it. Are you going to do a bit of sanding on there as well? Oh, no, you're pushing it. Oh, boy. I'll just need just a note for you. That's, that's the area that we've got, okay. the, we've got the camera. So, 
You, you I'm going to grab my drink while he's... Uh, you want me to sand it a little bit, yeah? Oh, the bowl's okay. I sanded that. It was, I was just thinking around the edges. But look at the mark there. Yeah? Oh. There's no pleasing some people. A badger's backside it reminds me of here. You'll be, you'll be getting this thrown off the platform, man. Huh? Sorry. Right. Well... There we are. So, you bit of sand in it. Do you want to do you want just a little bit of sand in on the on the outside, just on the surround? I think it needs a little bit of sand in. Oh yeah, there's quite a few whiskers there. A little bit down by there. Look. Nice piece of oak to carve. Oh, he's looking. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, a bit of recycled yeah. wood again. Bit of reclaimed timber. Lovely. Yes. Yeah, um, this will come up a lovely colour now when we put the shellac on it. Yeah, it'll. And this is another thing as well, because with oak. You, there's a lot of talk about... Um, can I shellac it now? Yeah, you, you carry on. People say about um, light oak. Am I in the right position? Yeah, great. But of course, for us, we always sort of, well, what's light oak? Because oak for us is a golden colour. And that's a perfect example you can see there. That's lovely and golden. Really nice gold colour to it. Um, and then recently, we've actually been having... Bit of difficulty getting hold of the um, look at that the, mark uh, there. Look, look yeah, at the green funny. in there now. Look at that colouring there. And again, there's nothing, nothing you can do about that. That's just a little. That's just a little bit of. Today they often refer to that as character. Just a bit of character in the wood. They would say. Um, it's just a little, you know, just a little mark in the woods. Um, the main thing is it's not on the on the front. The front is nice and clean because, of course, this will end up in our online our online shop. This this particular that's been. yeah. What's this one called? Yeah, I was trying to work it out. I think it's Celtic Dreams. Oh, Celtic I think Dream. that's the right one. Yeah. Um, but I'm probably completely wrong. I know there's one. It's one of two. One of two designs, and I can't remember the other name. So fingers crossed. It's called Celtic Dreams. Hey, perhaps we could do Celtic Nightmares as well. Perhaps. Well, we've had a few of those. Yeah. There we are. So you can see that colour really coming out now on the. Well, I'm getting um, the shellac now inside as well. Inside. I always think the first coat as well. That's the time when you really want to try and get a good cover in. Yeah. Um, you know, and then the, the later coats. We, we have different ideas on finishing as well, because I tend to do the first coat a little bit, I put a little bit more on, and then put less on as I do more coats. You tend to go the other way, don't you? And um, you say that the first coat should be a lighter coat. So, mine, yeah. would, be, mine would be wrong. I suppose, I'm you see, wrong. what they used to do um, with different, you know, even with paint and that kind of thing, they would often put, a, a, I don't know, a little bit of spirits in it, um, you know, to thin it. So yeah. the first coat would always be a thinner coat, Yeah. generally speaking. But I always think you can get a good covering on the first coat. I'm more We've got relaxed. a little mark by there as well. That's, can you see that little mark? Just, well, I, asked just that. I was, I was yeah. asking you to... That's a strange one, that, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. the one you want me to sand. I was just it. Saying, with, the, with the sanding, but you get these things, you get little yeah. marks. Um, I mean, other things you get, you get wood that's spalted. A word that doesn't even exist, spalted wood. But yeah, you get you get wood that they they describe as spalted things like beech, and that's where you actually either get a fungus or you get um, water, in, in, sort of in the drying out. But it gives it lovely character in the woods. Um, Dad, as a joiner, he he sort of wouldn't have used spalted woods. No, you, I, I can't. Time, and you're I still could, not keen I, on I it. I couldn't get you? my head around that because no. for me that was. Water damage that was. That's it. So you wouldn't yeah, use it. So there we are. So that's um, a very quick demonstration of, of what we would do then very much for our day job. What we would be doing on a, a daily basis. Uh, popular design, one that we do in our online shop. As I said, we've got a few different things coming up. If you're interested in hearing the stories of our family collection of spoons, we've got that live stream tomorrow. We'll be doing another demonstration, 8 o'clock UK time with ten and tours, we'll be explaining a few of the spoons. But we've also got our documentary coming in and that will go into more detail and more depth. They, they're, for offering, they're offering a prize, action. aren't they, tomorrow? I think there is a prize tomorrow, yeah. yeah. I think um, we, we're offering, a, it was a love spoon, uh, a personalised love spoon, so there's a quiz question they're going to ask. And so that, that will be available on that live stream. Uh, thank you all again for watching. Remember, any comments, any questions, 
put them in that comment section. We'd be delighted to help you out. And as always, we'll be back again soon with more videos.